you. What's the deal? It's time to get real with Jahaira. It's time to get real with Jahaira. YouTube. What's the deal? YouTube, what's the deal? It's your girl, Jahaira, and I am back, and I am being kissed. What's going on, everybody? I uh, wanted to introduce y'all to the newest member of the Jahaira's Mission family. This earth, is Teeny. Teeny is a Chihuini, which is to say a Chihuahua and a Dachshund. So he's hot dog quality. And he's a boy. Although I prefer to think of him as gender non-conforming. And I love him very much. And um, I'm getting ready to launch into this video. It's going to be in black and white because I feel like hell. But I just wanted to introduce him to y'all because you will probably be seeing him around very often because he doesn't really leave my side. And he's only eight weeks old and I love him very much. And he's an excellent subtastic. He watches all of my videos and thumbs down them. <laughs> But, um, yeah, y'all, I'm launching into this Tory Spelling Michigas. Give me a second and we'll get it popping, all right? I'll talk to you later. I love you. Mwah. One love. Say goodbye, teeny. Yeah, I've become one of those obnoxious dog people. Bye. One paw. <laughs> so, yeah, this Tory Spelling situation. I, I don't know, like, if y'all are really up on it. Frankly, it's all kind of news to me. Um, and this isn't really about Tory per se as much as it, is, as it is, like, a general commentating, commentary, commentary, on dating. You know, Tory Spelling has been married to Dean McDermott for, like, a while. They have, like, a slew of kids and everything like that. Short version of a long story, come to find that he cheated on her. He cheated on her, but see, if y'all remember the way they got together... Yeah, y'all, sorry. Technical issues of exacerbated proportions. Anyway, Dean McDermott, McDermott was married to Mary Jo Eustace. Tori Spelling was married to her own husband. I believe it was her first husband. They got together while they were both still married to their individual partners. But again, I don't want to turn this into like this like ad nauseum discussion upon Tori Spelling's marital situation. Except to update y'all that, you know, Dean is now in rehab as though the inability to keep one's zipper up requires rehab? Whatever. Okay, great. But again, not so much about them. As much as it is about just, you know, my desire for myself and for all of you in 2014. I very much want... <sighs> so much, but I, I, I really, really, really want to kind of impress upon everybody the need to, to remember the old lessons that we were taught. I feel like that hasn't been happening lately. I feel like, you know, when you're looking at so much that's going on in the media, in pop culture, people are just forgetting. Either they're not being taught or they're not remembering what they've been taught. I was taught, if he cheats with you, he will cheat on you. I remember that one. I didn't always pay attention to it, and I paid the price for it, but I do remember it. There's so many stuff, like, I, I feel like in some ways we really have to go back to basics. In 2014, as for myself, I really want to have agency over my body, my sexuality, my morals, my ethics. You know what I mean? I really want, this for me, 2014 is a year of ownership. I want to take ownership I intend to take ownership over all of those things. And that's kind of what I want for y'all because y'all, you know, the the dating thing is hard and I'm not even going to sit here and, and, and this is not exactly late breaking news. The dating thing is hard and, and sustaining an established relationship isn't either, isn't easy either. It really isn't. And I just want to see us do better. You've got to know what you expect to get out of a prospective partner. Or what you expect to get out of a partner that you already have. And you've got to be able to articulate these things for yourself. Because, you know, if you don't, 
<laughs> they're never going to know. This all sounds so trite and it sounds so cliche, but it can't be if we're still making the same mistakes. Like, it can't be. It can't go. It's it's not the Farrah Fawcett haircut. It's not out of style. It's not, although that did make a resurgence. I digress. The point is, we've got to start paying attention to the stuff that, you know what I'm saying, that life has taught us, that our, our mothers and loved ones and trusted ones have taught us. You're just eating the stuff. You're eating. Um, but yeah, y'all, like, it's, it's just, it's crazy out there. You know, y'all know I was talking to somebody... I made a video about the fact that I was talking to him. I cried like a jackass, pure ugly cry in said video about talking about him. And um, I had to kick him to the curb. I had to let him go. I had to let him go because he stole from me. And y'all, and this is another thing, and I really want you to get this. You've got to know what your deal breakers are. You've got to know what your bottom line is when it comes to people messing up in relationships because they will mess up. That is what they will do. They'll do it. They don't mind. They are not above it. For me, you know, old folks would say, if you lie, you'll cheat. If you'll cheat, you'll steal. For me, lying, lying is, lying is gray area for me. My whole thing is just don't lie to me about little shit. Don't lie to me about little shit. Don't lie to me about small, insignificant shit. Like, don't tell me that you're at the dentist's office when you're really at the movie theater. Don't do that. Please don't do that. And I say don't do that because I'm, like, I think of myself as a fairly upfront individual. I mean, y'all have seen me three years in the game now. Like, I have laid it on the line. Like, I'll tell you the fucked up aspects of my personality before I let you discover it. You know what I'm saying? I just don't mind because I'm human, and I'm having a, a human experience, as are we all. So, yeah, I'll get the worst parts of me out the way first, so then you can decide whether or not you still want to... You know what I'm saying? But, yeah, like, just don't lie to me about insignificant shit. If you have, you know, $750 million in unmarked bills under a floorboard in the basement, and you don't choose to tell me about that, I can understand why. I can because I, I would like to think that somehow, somewhere down the line, that's going to benefit me. So I'm okay with being in the dark about certain shit. But when it's small shit, just don't lie to me. Do not lie to me. Cheating is another thing. Cheating for me is certainly more... Uh... Oh my god. Cheating is worse than lying. That's the best I could come up with. But cheating too, for me is on a case-by-case -case scenario as to whether or not it's a deal-breaker. because and, and follow me. I'm going to bless you. I know y'all are kind of gagging. Hold on. For me, it's sort of like I need to assess where we're at in the relationship, whether we're still in, like, the getting-to-know-you phase or whether we're, like, established. And then I need to know sort of what the rules are within said relationship, like what exactly our parameters are. Have we established that we're going to be... Um, did I almost say anonymous... Y'all, it is 3.41 in the morning. Take my ass with a grain of salt if we're going to be monogamous. If we haven't had that conversation, I can't exactly get too mad. You know, my pride might be hurt, but if I ain't opened my mouth, I can't really say too much of nothing. Because who's to say that I wasn't doing my dirt on the side too if we have not had that conversation? Necessary conversation, people. Open your mouths. This is the year of the open mouth. Beyonce said so. Anyway, the point is, um, so yeah, the, like, cheating for me also, not so much gray area, but it's just, it's conditional. It's conditional. If we've got all our ducks in a row dotted, every I cross, every T, and you still cheat, you gotta go. But there's some wiggle room there. There's a little bit of wiggle room. But y'all, the one thing that I, under absolutely no circumstances, can abide by is a thief. Do not steal from me. Do not steal from me. When you steal from me, there, there is no further conversation. There's no dialogue. There's no, like, you know, Lao Tzu, Confucius kind of let's get to the bottom of this and really 
peel back the layers of the proverbial onion. Fuck out of here with all that. No. No. You steal from me, you might as well take my motherfucking bed, strap it to your back, and run the hell out of the door. You might as well steal something that size from me, because I don't give a damn what it was. You steal from me, you're going. And, and my reasoning behind this is... And I don't mean to sound, you know, egregious or, or, or egocentric or megalomaniacal or trying to pat myself on the back and whatnot, but I consider myself to be a very generous person. And those who know me would agree. And I say that with all humility, but it is just the nature of my being. I am a giver. It's what I do. My, my philosophy sort of has always been like, if I have, we all have. You know what I mean? Because... It, it, the gift is in the giving for me. I'm very Oprah in that sense. But yeah, I, I just, I love to see the expression on people's faces when I can do something for them that, you know what I'm saying, they, they weren't expecting or they, they couldn't do for themselves. You know, it's just, I, I have that kind of, that's who I am. That's the kind of heart that I have. I mean, I'm not rolling in the dough by any stretch of the imagination. But I, you know, and it's not just like, person-to-person -person loans are like, let me get five bucks or something like that. Like, I'm actively involved in two charities as well as a, a micro-lending, you know, movement. Kiva. I think I've talked about that before. Not sure. I should have. Um, but yeah, that's just what I do. You know what I'm saying? And I'm happy to do it. Like, I, I get so much fulfillment out of it. So I say all that to illustrate the point that, like, nine times out of ten... If you ask me and I have it, I'll do it. If I don't have it, I'll, I'll see what I can do about finding a way to find somebody who does have it. You know what I'm saying? It's just rarely, and I mean very rarely, is it just a flat no for no quantifiable reason. That's not me in the least. You know what I'm saying? The, the closest it could ever come to that is if, like, if I've set money to the side for a very specific purpose that I really can't touch, then you know what I'm saying? Life is life. You gotta do what you gotta do. That's just what it is. But yeah, he just went ahead and helped himself to my money. Assuming that it was going to be okay. And it wasn't. And I mean, I cursed that man from Genesis to Revelations and sent him packing. And that's all there was to it. And y'all, please spare me the I'm sorry that it didn't work out comments. It's all a lesson learned. It's, it's all a lesson learned. You know what I'm saying? And at the end of the day, everybody does not deserve what it is that you have to offer. That's just what it is. Everybody is not worthy of that. And it doesn't necessarily mean that you are better or I am better than the next individual. But there really are levels to this thing. And sometimes people just, you know... I, I can't expect three to act like five or seven to act like nine. I just can't do that. So you meet people where they're at and you, you, you fellowship with them within their limited capacity and then you just move on. You know what I mean? What I offered him, he was not ready to receive. And that's all that was. That's, that's all that was. So it's no love lost and I'm fine and Teeny's fine. <laughs> so, I mean... Life is good, but yeah, y'all, I know this was a bit of a rant and a ramble, but um, just suffice it to say, like, we've, we've got to claim ownership. We've got to stake our claim over our own lives. This has been the purpose of the mission from the very beginning. It's just standing in your truth, having a firm conviction on what makes you tick, and not compromising that. Just not doing it. You know what I mean? I mean whether you're single and trying to get booed up or whether you're in an established relationship or whether you've been married for, you know, and you could tell us where you were when Lincoln was shot. I don't give a damn. The rules still apply. Know who you are and say what you feel. Because if you don't say it, they can't hear it. And if they can't hear it, they won't do it. And if they don't do it, you're asked out because you're all emotional about the fact that they didn't do what you didn't say, what you needed them to do in the freaking first place. This is not, you know... You don't have to be a neurosurgeon to figure all this out. Folks would say closed mouths don't get fed. The Bible says you have not because you ask not. Express your needs. Make sure somebody knows what's not okay by you. 
And your partner ideally will do the same thing. And then you can get a real dialogue going about where you can meet in the middle. And you can do that sort of thing without sacrificing your, your morals or your integrity or your, your conscious conscience. 3.48 in the morning, that's why. All right, y'all, I'm done. End rant. Y'all take care, and, and please know that I love you. Please give me your thoughts, too. You know what I'm saying? I, I hope what I said touched something in you and made some kind of sense. Let me know. I love you. Talk to you very soon. One love. Going to bed.